We're here at the Consumer Electronics Show 2015. Uh, uh, we're here in the Broadcom booth. Now, if you don't know what uh, Broadcom is, because they don't sell a lot of consumer products, but their products, their, their technology is inside a lot of things, and inside a lot of things that control the Internet. And here I am with the CEO. Great to see you. Uh, th thanks, 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 uh, thanks for uh, having me again to the suite here. Good. What it, it, you know, you guys always are showing me stuff that's a year or two uh, away from being in the products out, out uh, you know, uh, uh, in the consumer companies out here. Uh, what, what are you seeing uh, is going to be the bleeding edge um, uh, here at Broadcom? Well, we help our customers solve some of their problems. And so some of the problems they have are, how do you make uh, higher speed connections to the home? So we're showing gigabit Ethernet technology, gigabit technology on cable uh, to the home. Uh, we're showing how do you integrate all the different devices in the home. So if you want to provide automation in your home or security, you know, you have existing systems in there, how do you tie it all together with your uh, entertainment systems, your movie systems, all that? And it's really hard to deal with like five different vendors and make it all work. And so how do we tie that together? Yeah. But for people who don't understand Broadcom, uh, what is Broadcom? Because you guys started out making uh, the Wi-Fi radios that are inside cell phones and stuff like that, right? So Broadcom makes microelectronic chips that go in things like set-top boxes and cell phones and the internet itself. So like 99.98% of all internet traffic goes across Broadcom chips. So we sort of power the backbone of the internet as well. So we are not visible in a lot of the consumer devices, but we make them work. It's always fun because you guys are all the way in the back of the hall. The, the, the general public's not allowed in here, so we're getting an exclusive. It's really uh, cool. Um, let's talk about the different themes I'm seeing at, at, at uh, CES this year. Uh, uh, wearables. Uh, you know, everybody's waiting, waiting for the Apple Watch, but there's a ton of watches. Withings just brought out a watch. The Pebbles CEO was in my suite last night. So, uh, what, what are you seeing happen in the in the wearable space, and what part does uh, the Broadcom uh, play in that? The real challenge for wearables is making them do something that you really need, okay? Because it's easy to make a device that you can put on your wrist, but a lot of them, you know, you'll wear it for a week and go, that was nice, and you put it aside. So the way they do that is they either put interesting sensors and other kinds of things, a lot of development on that, um, or make it socially interesting. So there are things you can do with friends or family, um, and it's not just a you experience, it's a, a, a we experience. So those are some of the things that are going on. But I think the wearable devices, they have to work on power so the battery lasts a little while. If you have to recharge it twice a day, that's no fun. See, I, 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 think, I think we're wrong here. There's a company called uh, StoreDot out of Israel that uh, has a battery technology that recharges in 30 seconds. And I saw, where, uh, I saw wireless power here last year in your suite. Uh, how, well, for, let's talk about wireless power. Right? What's happening there? Because you showed me a, a pad last year that you could put things on top of and it will wireless, wirelessly charge. What's happening in that space? Wireless power, I think, is definitely going to happen. And the question is, how rapidly does it deploy? Uh, the wireless power is interesting for a couple of reasons. One is convenience. But there's another trend that's going on, which for these wearable devices, a lot of people like to take them into the shower or swim with them or surf with them or go diving with them. So I think you're going to see a goal to make them more reliable and more waterproof. And one of the things to do that is to go for wireless power because it just eliminates one more connector, one more thing that causes water intrusion or salt water intrusion. Or, or uh, I understand that certain brands of sunscreen are particularly nasty on wearable devices. And so yeah. the intrusion of that into these devices just gets solved when you make everything, you know, wireless. Very cool. Uh, there's a whole car thing here at uh, the Consumer Electronics Show. Does Broadcom play in the car space at all? Absolutely we do. And I think there are two interesting trends going on cars right now. One is the obvious trend to make it autonomous driving. And I think that's going to eventually come. Maybe more of a business problem with insurance companies and regulation. Well, BMW uh, showed a car, or uh, uh, Mercedes and BMW showed cars that uh, make it harder to hit things. They have sensors all over the car. My, I, I borrowed a Mercedes to drive here. And there's camera sensors on the roof that show you what, how close you are to the curve so you can really uh, park it more accurately. The, the safety features are wonderful, and, and anybody who's tried these out, it's like a no-brainer, you want these. But, you know, as we go to autonomous cars and as we go to these other things, it's more about also the car becomes the, the living room on wheels. And Broadcom powers a lot of the technology in your living room, and so that's very interesting to us. And, you know, the days when we grew up, you know, the goal was to keep the kids from fighting in the back seat. You let them play movies and stuff. Well, if the driver isn't driving the car anymore, well, what are they going to do for three hours?
three hours on the trip to wherever. And so, you know, they're going to see, you're going to have a lot more infotainment kinds of things in cars. And, you know, just think about the whole car can get designed differently. Right now, the car is all seats facing forward, optimized around the driver. Well, if you don't drive the car anymore, well, the car looks very different potentially going forward. So I think a lot of those trends are interesting to us and how do you make that possible both from a safety point of view and an entertainment of the people in the car. Uh, what are you seeing happening in home automation? Uh, Google bought Nest and Dropcam and Revolve. Revolve was a, a big booth out here last year and now it's gone, right? It's Google bought it up and said, yeah, you're, not a, you're gonna be uh, subsumed into the Google Home uh, initiatives. You know, home automation's been around for a long time. I mean, X10 was around decades ago. I had it and so forth. The real challenge with all these things is how do you make all your devices work? And it's no longer about just turning things on and off. Okay, it's about cameras in the house and switching to different cameras, viewing them remotely. Um, it's about being a little more intelligent. Things like thermostats and smoke detectors are great examples of taking what used to be a really dumb device that just was either on or off, okay, and making it smart. And so a challenge for us as an industry is how do we make all this stuff work together? Not just connect from a, you know, can you make the Wi-Fi connect or the Zigbee or whatever, Bluetooth connect, but can you actually make these things work in concert? Okay, as opposed to as opposed to these silos. Yeah, I, and we're as an industry, we're still not there. I, I have some little walkie-talkie things uh, that use Bluetooth, and uh, I was using my Mercedes, and all of a sudden the, the walkie-talkie thing stops working because the Mercedes took the Bluetooth, right? It's uh, it's pretty crazy. Uh, the, the, we're still uh, in a in a, a world where we have to be a little nerdy to get things to work. But in the early days of Bluetooth, it was the same way. I remember when I, I got a new phone and I went to pair it with uh, my car. I had a BMW and, and they basically told me I had to go upgrade the firmware in my car. Well, how do you do that? Oh, you got to take it into the dealer. Okay, to pair, so to pair my phone with my car, I had to make a trip to the dealer. Okay, that's just not realistic. But we're, you know. Elon Musk is solving that with the, the Tesla automatically updates uh, while it's sitting in your driveway, right? Exactly, and that's a great example of, of how they'll fix some things, but also, uh, you know, it shows that that was the early days of Bluetooth. Today, it pretty much just works, okay, and we can solve those problems, but, you know, it'll take some work, and, you know, that's, that's part of our job to make these different things play together. Yeah. Out, out here on the show floor, I, uh, I noticed a lot of drones that were never here last year, right? DJI has a pretty big booth out here, and there's a, there's a whole bunch of booths that are selling drones. Do you guys play in the drone space, or, or is this just uh, something that... You're watching it with interest like I am. We do play in the drones. Uh, we're the Wi-Fi in a lot of those drones out there, and it's interesting what they've done. And uh, I just think it's fascinating because, uh, you know, there's so many drones. We'll see how they survive. But, you know, the concept that you, you know, get rid of these uh, selfie sticks, you know, just throw a drone up in the air to take a picture. And uh, uh, I think as the price points come down and the connectivity comes down, they'll be pretty interesting. So here in the booth, uh, last year you showed me a 600 me uh, megabit LTE, if I remember right, something like that. Is that, am, I, am I being accurate about that? Well, yeah, we showed you very high speed, yeah, okay. high, high speed, speed uh, LTE, absolutely. Okay. So what's the state of that? Is that starting to get deployed this year or are we still a little bit of ways before we get a, uh, a much higher speed uh, LTE network? That's more of an infrastructure problem. It's not so much the phones, it's deploying it in the phone companies. And anybody who's ever been to a football stadium and you try and take a picture and send it to your friends, it's not the phone that's the problem. It's the infrastructure and overloading of the different devices. And of course, we can help on that. Broadcom does a lot of the infrastructure for the networking. And so there's an opportunity to upgrade those by orders of magnitude. We'll show you some Wi-Fi technology here today that uh, will let you do four gig in your home. So what, what would we see in the suite uh, if you were giving me a tour? In fact, I think you're giving me a tour, right? <laughs> yeah, we'll give you a tour. I mean, if you came in, one of the things that we do is we work with different carriers around the world and, and uh, uh, network operators uh, to do different things in the home. So upgrading your set-top box to be a full gateway and automate your home and provide security and things like that. So one of the demos we have here today shows what that's going to look like over the next few years. Uh, we have, uh, for those of you who have cable modems um, and set-top boxes, uh, getting the performance up from one gig to four gig even, you know, into the home. So just dramatically faster performance for uh, internet capability. We have all kinds of different devices supporting 4K uh, and Ultra HD. Yeah, that's uh, a big thing. I'm seeing a lot less 3D out here on the show floor this year, but I'm seeing these beautiful OLED screens. Aren't those beautiful? You know, you see one of those, you say, I really want one of those. They're, they're just gorgeous. And the trick is getting the content. And so either streaming it quickly over the internet or having your cable provider, your satellite provider offer. Yeah, Rocky's still shooting in 1080p. We need to get a, a new camera and a 
Well, he got a new Mac Pro this year, right, so he can handle the 4K. I think you should be really embarrassed you're not shooting this in 4K. I mean, that's like really retro. Horrible, Rocky. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but the problem is, it's a good point, because if you were shooting this in 4K, how many of your viewers would be able to see it in 4K? Not many. Yeah, so, but that'll change over the next year, because I think a real change I see on the CES 4 this year is that 4K is now becoming accessible and mainstream. And if I, I, uh, lower cost, uh, affordable price. It's not a ten thousand dollars screen anymore. Vizio has uh, two thousand dollars screens, and the costs are really coming down on the four K TVs, and they're beautiful. Well, it's it's low cost, but also you can get content. Okay, those two things have to come hand in hand. So, uh, if I were buying a new TV set today, I would really buy a four K TV set. So, what, it, well, let's start. Okay. Let, let's uh, get a look around. Okay, we'll do it. What are we uh, seeing here? So these are just some of the products that uh, our customers we work with for Internet of Things. And what we've done is we've developed something called Wicked, and W-I-C-E-D, and I can show this up for the camera here. This is a, a, a little device. This is a, a, basically a development kit that allows you to create a wearable. So it has Bluetooth in it, it has a processor in it, it has memory in it, it has a whole bunch of sensors. So temperature and gyroscope and all kinds of stuff, all the motion tracking things and so forth. Yeah, the team who built this came out and showed it to me, so there's a longer video if you yeah. want to get it. Uh, so, so this kind of technology we've deployed to a bunch of customers and they've built all kinds of devices from uh, temperature things that go in your oven to light bulbs to little cars, toys, all kinds of things. And so Broadcom is really enabling a lot of these Internet of Things devices. And so we're different than a lot of other companies because we provide Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and all the analog sensors, uh, the hubs that do those. Uh, Which, when, the, when the industry says Internet of Things, uh, I'm sure there's somebody watching that is not that familiar with that term. What does that mean? Well, I think of it as two things. I think of it as wearables, which are more like accessories for your smartphone. They're things that you'll have on your body, and they do things like uh, measure heart rate or other kinds of things. Going forward, they'll do some very interesting medical stuff. There's some great sensors coming out. And then I think of Internet of Things more as tying into a Wi-Fi network uh, that automate things in your house or a factory or a building or things like that. And so that would be something you might have in a light bulb or a smart appliance uh, or something that would control based on time of day, use of power, those kind of things. Now, uh, uh, if we're going to get a lot of things in our house, I mean, I have a drop cam and I have a revolve unit, I have a Sona, I have all sorts of stuff, right? And I'm sure you do too. Uh, we need uh, better Wi-Fi. You absolutely need better Wi-Fi, and so you need to make it faster. Yeah. And also, if you like to play games, a lot of the hardcore gamers, you care about latency. Oh, yeah. Okay, so how much time from when you do something till it goes across the internet and comes back from some other player, you know, that's very important. So we want to improve the latency, okay, as well as get much higher performance. And so we've got some products here. Uh, behind you is a uh, higher performance Wi-Fi for the house that'll go up to four gigabits per second. Uh, so about four times faster than what's currently on the market? That's at least four times faster than <laughs> the currently. Four. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> That's going to be fun. So you're going to get lower latency, and you're going to be able to spread a lot more uh, video around. And w when you get your 4K TV with a new set-top box, that probably is going to matter, right? Yeah, and you can say, well, you might not have that kind of speed connectivity to the Internet. But, for example, if you're backing up movie files or something like that, you know, which you want to wait 30 minutes or like you do it in five minutes. So, you know, those kinds of things will help. Yeah, Rocky's uh, going to look forward to that high-speed uh, network. Uh, I keep going faster because these cameras are uh, spitting out big files. Well, you know, people generate data at an amazing rate, and so when you generate all that data, you need to move it around. And so, is distance getting better as well as the rate? Or? Distance is getting much better, and the other technologies uh, in the new uh, Wave 2 technology and multi-user MIMO allow you to eliminate some of the noise because they transmit just enough information to each particular person in the house rather than just broadcasting at the same power to everybody. The new uh, uh, high-speed Wi-Fi, when are we going to see that in an Asus router or an Apple router? Well, I can't speak for those particular companies, but you'll certainly see products this year. This year. And uh, is there going to be a huge cost difference between, between the old one and the new one? Probably not, I'm guessing. Well, four times faster is good for something. I think uh, you'll see them premium priced initially, but all this stuff does come down in price quickly. Yeah. So uh, what's the next stop on our tour? Well, let's see. Where'd you like to go next? You want to go see the home automation? Sure. Let's do it. Right, so what we're showing here in the booth, uh, behind you we have doorbells and all different kinds of stuff coming into the house, locks. Uh, here we have smart appliances, all kinds of thermostats, cameras, and so forth, showing how uh, you can get the TVs to uh, have a lot of the content. Um, you know, you, somebody pushes the doorbell, it shows up on your TV and turns on the camera. What, what is the breakthrough here? 
this year? The breakthrough here is really integrating it together and getting all the different technologies to work. So as you go down this row, we even have something that has a car charging station. And for example, if you hit, I'm going to bed tonight, turn off all the lights, it says, oh, you forgot to plug in the car to charge. Okay, so it's that. So there's a lot of, of smarts in the in the device. It's the smarts and the innovation and understanding how it all plays together. Understanding, for example, your smartphone connected to your TV, uh, the set-top box can realize who is in the room. Okay, based on the smartphone. So when the adults are in the room, you know, it switches to the channels they like. When there's no adult in the room, the kids don't watch the porn channels. You know, so it's it's that kind of smarts that we want to tie together in the house and enable our customers to provide services based on that. Today, even lights uh, are uh, fairly expensive that are internet connected lights. So uh, most people probably haven't upgraded their entire house to internet connected, like Philips lights or something like that. But it's coming. The costs keep coming down. The, the devices get better. But there's still that. Uh, it's still too nerdy to hook them up and uh, get get get. Uh, get the app r running and stuff like that. Are, are your innovations helping to make it a little less nerdy and a little bit easier to uh, get 50 new lights at home and hook them all up without uh, spending too much, uh, uh, you know, getting your uh, techie friends to come over and set it all up for you? Well, there's two problems that you point out. One is the cost. Okay, and so you got to drive the cost of connectivity of an appliance down. So our goal is to get the cost of connectivity down to a very small fraction of the device. So in a light bulb, it should not dramatically increase the cost of the light bulb to make it a connected light bulb. And that's our goal going forward. But also, again, once you've connected up the light bulbs and so forth, it's one thing to just have the light bulbs able to connect to the internet or to you. It's another thing to do something intelligent with that, like create scenes, uh, the ability to have an application. So, you know, oh my gosh, I, I drove off in the car and I forgot to turn off the appliances. Okay, I can do all that remotely. So we're all, uh, all the nerds are doing things like if uh, a Facebook co comment comes in, your house turns blue. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and nerds will be nerds, and you know they're going to do that. And that's actually fun because some of that stuff is sort of lame or fun once, but some of it will turn into features that people actually really want. Uh, and, and it's hard to envision what those are. Uh, I just see this as a wave of innovation we just haven't had before. You haven't been able to do this kind of thing in the past, and now we'll figure out interesting things to do with it. I see some devices are from Com Comcast and other other players. You have cameras, you have doorbells and stuff like that. What else are you uh, showing uh, as part of the devices that are connected this way? Well, we work with far too many devices to show all of them here. The wall would be just, you know, a, a, a square kilometer. But uh, uh, we've selected some devices here. And again, the goal is to illustrate the two problems. One is how do you make the devices intelligent at a reasonable cost? And then how do you make them uh, play together in a good way? And I think one of the things we want to do is talk about how this is not only true in your home, but also true in your car. And we'll go down and look at uh, cars and how we make cars more intelligent. Sounds great. We're, let's go see uh, uh, how cars are changing. Uh, which, which you don't really see if you buy a new Mercedes or a, a VW. Uh, you don't get to see the wiring and the, uh, the infrastructure that's inside the car, but you guys have made a big breakthrough there, so let's go see it. Okay. So what do you got in your hand? So what I have in my hand are two different cables. This is the cable that cars use today uh, to communicate across the car. So if you have a camera, a backup camera in your car, it'll typically be connected with this. A lot of the sensors and other things in cars go through this cable. It's a coaxial cable, has these expensive connectors on it and stuff like that. It's limiting how much we can do in a car, okay? Because our goal is to make a car smarter, safer, and more entertaining. Okay, so uh, the average car today, uh, uh, a Chevy Volt, for instance, I think generates 200 megabytes per second or 100 megabytes per second of data off of, I think, 30 or 50 se sensors, right? And then they, you add in the, uh, the navigation systems and the, everything else that's going on in the car. We, we really want to see a lot of innovation there, right? Well, not only does the car generate that much data, but there's hundreds of miles of wire in a car. Okay, it's incredible. And so what we want to do is replace this with this. Okay, and this is a cable um, that's based on a single uh, twisted pair of wire. Um, it runs high-speed Ethernet in the car. And notice the connector, it's a very inexpensive connector versus the very expensive connectors you have before. So this inexpensive wire runs substantially faster than this older technology. And so what we have here is a car that you might have. This is an illustration of a car. And so you can see there are cameras, uh, there, are an there are antennas, there are sensors, there's um, uh, various kinds of things for or infotainment uh, that you can put in a car, all tied together with this kind of technology. So this will be rolling out in cars over the next few years. It's already in the BMW uh, i8, i3, the BMW X5. It's in the VW Passat today, uh, but it'll be rolling out across the automotive market going forward.
What, what does this do to the cost of a car? Does it remove a, a, a dollar from every car, or is it uh, much more significant than that? Well, it, re it removes quite a few dollars from the car. It removes tens of dollars from cost. Okay, uh, which in a car is a big deal. Um, and it could remove as much as hundreds of dollars because it, you can also run power over the same wire. And so that'll reduce the whole wiring harness. Uh, the other thing it does is it can reduce maybe 100 pounds of weight in a car. Okay, and if you take- Which means fuel efficiency. Which means fuel efficiency and all kinds of other benefits as well. So, and, and that, plus it runs a lot faster. So it's sort of a no brainer as a standard going into cars and that's why they use it. Well, thanks, thanks for showing this. What, what's the engineering uh, like? You guys have, uh, I don't know, more than a thousand PhDs working on Broadcom. Is that true? Uh, we do. Uh, we, have, we have over a thousand PhDs uh, in Broadcom, uh, more than many universities. Uh, it's a very smart uh, set of folks and, and brilliant engineering. And you know what, the technology that did this, we originally developed this technology to work in data centers. And the challenge in cars was always how do you make the noise immunity and other kinds of automotive specs, reliability of these connectors and other kinds of things. And so our guys always said, well, this should work in a car. And we found an automotive manufacturer who was very innovative, BMW, who partnered with us to develop this technology. And so they were very helpful as a customer to work with us uh, and, and it made it happen. And again, this will be a revolution in terms of the kind of bandwidth you can get in a car. This is why uh, uh, BMW has an R&D center in uh, Silicon Valley, and Mercedes, and a lot of General Motors has one there, right? So that they can work with companies like yours to develop things like this to make uh, new toys for, our, uh, for buying a new car, right? Well, the car manufacturers, I think, are going through a really interesting period. Um, you know, cars used to be something where you would change the technology every seven years. Okay, and now the evolution of technology in a car is going at a rapid pace. You have uh, car makers like Tesla who show people that you can update the firmware in your, in your garage, okay, and just driving a very rapid pace. And you have a lot of other car makers moving very quickly now. So it's far more innovation going on in cars than ever, and it's really exciting. Yeah. Well, thank you for uh, showing this. Uh, what, um, yeah. What's next on What's the tour? Next? Well, we'll show you one more thing, uh, which is uh, important to consumers uh, who want high-speed internet in their house. Let's go. If you're a consumer lucky enough to be connected with Google and have a gigabit per second in your home, that's great. But for all the rest of the people who aren't yet connected with that, who have you know, a cable modem or some other way they're connected to the internet, right now it's not very fast. Okay, and uh, to watch all this 4K content, you know, you don't want to have 10 megabits per second. Okay, you want to have a gigabit per second. And so we've developed a technology that works over the cable infrastructure that will allow you to have a theoretical speed of up to 10 gigabits per second. Wow. And so off of existing uh, copper wires out to my house? Of existing kinds of cable infrastructure, yeah. They, they'll need to upgrade some of the things to get the higher performance, but, but enable that at a reasonable capital deployment. And so what we've done here is it's a different encoding technology. Uh, it's a very clever encoding technology and for your geekier people you'll recognize what's going on on the uh, spectrum analyzer over here but uh, it's a better encoding technology. Um, it's called 4K QAM uh, which is uh, quadrature amplitude modulation and it's it's 2K by 2K okay in terms of the size. So it's, it's a very uh, intense data encoding and decoding to get this kind of performance. So the way it works is uh, you get very, very good encoding. You can run things quickly. We got a speed dial here. You can see on this demo thing we have here, we're running at a download speed of four gigabits per second. Uh, it varies a little bit uh, based on uh, uh, data rates and so forth. But you can see that we do QAM channels and OFDM channels simultaneously. So you have the QAM channels that are doing a little less than a gig and about uh, a little more than three gig on the OFDM channels simultaneously on the same wire. It's amazing how much uh, you guys and, and others are compressing data uh, over there or on wires. Uh, uh, you know, ten years ago, ten years ago, did you ever think we would get to the today? No, it seems uh, impossibly fast. But you know, it's just math. And so get your kids to study math in school because this is about math, you know, and doing the encoding, very clever encoding. And of course, once you get all this high speed in your house, you want to deploy it around the house. And so we also have the five gig Wi-Fi uh, with multiple streams there. So you can get up to four gig around your house with uh, the technology there. Well, thanks. You guys have a, a fun job coming up with uh, the real hardcore technology. It, it proves Silicon Valley is still uh, investing in this kind of stuff, right? They're, we're not all building Instagram clones or anything like that, right? It's fun stuff.
Well, thanks, thanks. for giving a little tour and uh, congrats on the success of CES. Uh, over the how many years have you been coming to CES? Oh, many many years. Yeah, me uh, a decade here with Broadcom, but before Do you that, remember well. when uh, uh, Vegas was uh, mostly pink earth? <laughs> you yeah. know, from from the I remember from uh, Caesar to the airport, there was nothing but pink earth. You know, yeah. CES used to be about who could build the biggest CRT TV and who had the loudest audio in the cars. And it was a very different kind of show. We're still building bigger TVs, okay? And, and cars went away for a little while, but cars are back at CES. Cars are cool again. Very much so. Uh, the Toyota's showing off a hydrogen car and uh, Mercedes is showing off uh, prototypes of what a self-driving car might look like. So. I think the innovation level has gone up dramatically in the last few years. And you know, there are some people who said that CES is boring this year because they didn't see the big splashes. But I think if you look under the hood about the emerging technologies, I think you're seeing the roots of what's going to be really exciting at the next few years here at CES. And we follow you guys at Broadcom.com? Absolutely. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thanks for the tour. It was awesome. Indeed. Bye now.